Okay, what's a very brown thing? She's giggling too, which makes me think it's like inappropriate, but it's paint. It can't like be. poop? <laughs> yeah. Dirty chocolate. No. <laughs> Dusty chocolate. Dusty, dirty chocolate. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to A Little About A Lot. I'm one of your hosts, Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the, also known as the Sorry Girls. This is a podcast where we just chat about literally random things, but this episode is going to take that definition to a whole new level. And I hope, um, yeah, we we have all these podcast ideas and by we, I kind of mean Daniela, she organizes the podcast. We'll chime in every once in a while, but this has been on the list because basically in this episode there's all these little topics that just aren't big enough to be flushed out episode ideas uh sorry that creaking was me moving my pop filter um and so this is like an episode featuring all of our random ideas that's right um okay before i get into that yeah what happened this week how was your week oh my gosh this was a very hectic week not a good week for kelsey why what happened Hmm. Well, I don't want to go into too much detail, and I'm probably not putting it in the house series video, but there's just, like, an issue with my contractor and my neighbor, and just, like, people aren't, things were happening, and people are disappointed, and um, and then I just, like, obviously I'm in the middle of it, because it's my house, and just, like, I was, it was a very touch-and-go time as far as, like, me keeping my neighbors and keeping my contractors but yeah it's a it's a situation it's a situation that has to be dealt with it's kind of still ongoing but um also like right before I got a call of like everything this big situation happening I got I was in an uber on my way to um my friend Angela's like dinner birthday and our uber got rear-ended oh which, my like, god I didn't know this it was not a big deal well you know because I was like I'm not coming into work because I just couldn't the oh, day I after I didn't know that it was related I know because it was like I was like I'm not feeling well but it was like more of like just a mental health thing than like I caught the cold that was going around the office but um yeah like it was not serious at all like nobody was hurt somehow his car did not have damage but like I mean I think David's feeling a little whiplash and I had a really bad headache in the morning and I don't think it was from like the two drinks I had at the <laughs> bar because like two drinks is a lot to have a headache like that and I just also got no sleep because I was up all night just concerned about the house situation um but yeah it was just like that and like if we had a regular job regular job but if it was like an in-office day or something I feel like I totally could have handled it but we had to drive like four hours total that's what our plan was for yesterday yep. was to like drive really far like film a video collab and I was just like that is not happening like I can sit and do office work and like I ended up going to Ikea and like doing some work from home but I was just like I can't be on camera today and I can't drive that far it's just like not happening yeah. anyways so I called in sick <laughs> sometimes you need those days right oh my god yeah really needed that day it was good well it was bad it was bad but it was good but it was a, it's good because like I'm obviously very flexible and the thing we were supposed to do and it was ended up being really flexible and it was fine so yeah I felt really bad I was like I I can't believe I'm like canceling this and it might mean that like we don't have a video but I was just like I don't really see another way it was like yeah and then even yesterday I like I forgot to hang up David's wet laundry because I was doing laundry and he was like he was like, why are my wet shirts on the couch, on the bed? And I was like, oh, my God, I totally forgot. I was, like, switching the laundry. And then I just, like, started crying. And he's like, why are you crying over this? And I was like, I don't know. I think it's just been a really bad week. Oh, my God. That's... And you can't be mad about me leaving laundry on the bed. <laughs> that's such a me thing to do. Like, I don't let things bother me until all of a sudden yeah. one stupid thing. Yeah. And I'm, like, so upset about it. But that's not the reason. It's because, like, a thousand other things happened before. He's like, are you upset because I got mad about the laundry or are you upset because it's been very hectic? And I'm like, both. Everything. <laughs> yeah, it's everything. Anyways, moving on. So, yeah, not a great week. So I'm excited to go to Texas. I leave in a couple hours straight from the office um, and just spend a little time in Texas with the fam. Nothing like change of weather. <laughs> right? I'm Get jealous. that vitamin. I'm very jealous. Which one is it? C, D, D, D from the sun. Yeah. Yeah. How was your week? Better? Well, that, that day that we didn't end up doing the thing ended up being weirdly productive for me because... Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, thanks. 
<laughs> I got well I had to get up extra early because we had to be somewhere at a certain time which means I had to leave a lot earlier than I normally do yeah so I was like up before Austin was even up I had a shower <laughs> I was like had my hair and like 90% of my makeup done and then I get the text being like oh it's not happening anymore and I was like what do I do <laughs> it's so early in the morning I'm all made up like I could very easily just go back to sleep wash this all off no but you did it <laughs> we did it and we were like let's turn this day into something useful so I ended up filming a video of basically me cleaning my house clean with me make sure you guys go watch it yeah it, it won't be it won't be out yet right probably not no but soon mm-hmm, go watch soon. it because now you know the reason <laughs> you're supposed to go film a collab that day but instead i was having a mental breakdown and becky cleaned her house i feel like it's a rare thing too because i'm o- i'm always complaining about how i feel like i can never film anything at home because the lighting's so bad yeah the hours i am home either it's the morning or it's like the evening and both of those times there's not great sun because of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is so weird. I'm filming a video in my house and the lighting is great. Yeah. This, is Danny never in happen. the video? He's in it a little bit, yeah. A little bit? He was. He wanted to be outside all day. I couldn't blame him. Wow. I know. I was trying to get him inside, but. He's just like by the door. Yeah. Does he whine? No. Like, will he be by the door and be like. Meh. Well, we have a dog door. So oh, when he so he wants just... to go out, he's gone. Okay, true. Yeah. And you just, like, lock that when you're on, like, longer yeah, trips it closes. or something? Yeah, we close it, like, every night and any oh, day you do? that we're not. Yeah. Oh. I don't want your raccoon buddies coming into my house. Oh, true. In my head, I'm, like, like <laughs> burglars. It's a small space. If a burglar can get through there. It's, like, do it. Well, it's, I'm not posing it as a challenge to anyone, but, like, it's tiny. <laughs> true. <laughs> but, um, yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. And I had the vacuum going, like, a lot during that day, and he's, like, not a fan. So he's like, I'm out. True. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see that video. <laughs> Hopefully it's entertaining because, I don't know, a lot of it's time lapses that so could end up being a lot shorter than I think it was because, like, yeah. an hour of me cleaning a room shortened down to, like, a minute in time lapse. So. It's true. There's that. But we I think it'll add, be good. We can add some VO. Mm-hmm. That's a good little YouTuber hack if, like, things aren't or that's just a filmmaking hack, really. But if things aren't, like, coming together properly, we're like, mm, we'll just, like... Add a little bit of VO here. Give some context to the situation. Yeah, I think it'll be good. At the very least, it'll just inspire people to clean their homes too, hopefully. I know. Can you call in sick so I can stay home and clean my house? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, perf. Sick day coming up. Perf. Um, okay, what else happened? Um, oh, my gosh. Yes. We announced something so exciting. Oh, that's right. This is so exciting. Guys. I don't think you guys realize how exciting this is. <laughs> that thing is is that we are officially invited to vidcon usa which a lot of you might not realize was a big deal because we've gone to vidcon before mm-hmm. but we've sometimes gotten just like invited guests mm-hmm. pass which means you can come without having to pay for the ticket but you don't get to do any of the cool like things that come with yeah you don't get your creator and we don't usually promote it to our audience just because like we aren't a featured creator and we don't know like what our schedule is going to be like or i mean i don't know it's just... yeah you can't come see us on a panel because we're not on one usually yeah so we never want to be like we're coming to vidcon and then somebody like i don't i don't know would like buy a ticket for us i don't think that's happening although i shouldn't say that because that's the reason why vidcon invited us they obviously want to sell tickets but whatever um but yeah if we were just like under our breath announcing it um i just didn't want people to come for that reason but yeah so now that we're officially a part of it yeah i feel like we've gone literally half the time because we are fans ourselves yeah and we just want to go see other creators and like learn and stuff like we actually would go to panels and stuff i know we've talked about this before on the podcast yeah so being people who have been on youtube for almost 10 years and have actively purchase tickets if not for us for our team Mm -hmm. to go down to vidcon every year to find and and like vidcon doesn't not know who we are too like we've had sent like really great panel ideas to them Mm -hmm. like we'd love to be a part (laughs) of it and i know that i shouldn't take it personally vidcon's a huge like corp that needs to like prioritize people and there's different needs they need and it's like a very hard thing i'm sure to choose who to invite or not yeah like how many people are actually featured at vidcon like it's still a lot but like maybe a couple hundred maybe compared to all the channels compared to like the millions of channels but even even just the top channels like that have over a million like subscribers but they even feature so many people that don't have a million subscribers because they just feature like 
so many different little niches and all different sizes and up and coming and stuff like that so anyways we're excited to be a part of it oh my god now on my list is like to go to vidcon like australia just saying we'd love to do that (laughs) as long as it's summer there let's get the first legit one under our belt yeah true anyway so that is happening so we will officially be there we we don't know in what capacity yet but we said we'd be down to like panel and stuff like that so i'm sure we'll be on a panel yeah you can get tickets at vidcon.com sure yeah (laughs) you can (laughs) i I feel like you're asking me and i was like i don't know the answer to this no no you can okay great you can get tickets there (laughs) and um come see us be so much fun yeah i'm excited anything else i finished all my christmas shopping wow I think it just goes, were we saying this on last week's podcast? I think we were, that like Christmas feels like it came so early this year. Yeah, but also it came so fast, like it's literally how many days away? But like, it's literally only the start of December. Like in years yeah, but before, it's the I feel like I never would have thought of even like what my shopping list is at this point. Well, good for you. I know, but I, I don't know why I was feeling the stress this year. As I was shopping last week, I was like, oh my God, it's too late. Like... I think, honestly, things get picked over so quickly. So I think it is smart to do your shopping early. Not just because, well, I feel like there's a lot of deals, too, obviously, with, like, Black Friday Mm -hmm. and whatever. Um, But, yeah, just things get so picked over and out of stock and stuff. And a lot of times nowadays we're, like, ordering things online. Yeah, I had to order something into a store, and I was stressing that it wouldn't come in time. And, like, it was barely even December when I had placed the order. And they're like, I think you'll be fine. I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. I'm not I'm not prepared in that sense. I feel like I just need to get settled right now. Like I feel like I'm not living in my house. Mm-hmm. Things are renos and that is honestly it's not going to be calmed down for like a long time. Like I'm probably talking like end of spring cuz we're not even done the basement yet and that was just like one third of the reno. I think it'll come fast though. Thanks Once they're done you. the basement, can you but move back in though? Yeah, once they've done, once they brought back in the boiler and stuff, like the concrete was going down, so it's like everything has to be out of the basement, which means all of your mechanical stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but once the concrete's down, which it is now, they're starting to bring back in like the hot water tank and the furnace and everything. So then I can have heat and water, which means then I can move back in. It's still going to be like noisy and dusty, and they have to do like all this reno like on the main floor and stuff, which mm-hmm. will be super disruptive, but. Yeah, I could be back there semi-comfortably. Then at least you have, like, a home base. You can get, like, stuff delivered to the house. You'll yeah. You'll be there. Yeah. Like that's that's part of it. Yeah, right now it's, like, hectic. And also just, like, the parking tickets at my boyfriend's are just racking up, so. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> do you, like, actively anticipate them? Do okay. Do you try to avoid them? <laughs> well, okay, so this is the sitch. Like, I always – there's, like, not really good parking options around his house. Like, he doesn't have – it's just street parking and there's no like lots like there's no you know Mm -hmm. lots it's like the part of toronto where it's just lots of little quaint side streets which is amazing but then you have to have a street parking permit or you need to get a temporary one which is super easy to do online (laughs) but it's like 11 dollars, and like if you're staying at somebody's house like a couple of nights a week that's like that adds up real quick but for a whole week it's only 25 dollars, so you save in bulk yeah um so anyways, I mean, I could get a parking pass, like, every single week, essentially, to park on a street. Mm-hmm. But I forgot to get a pass because I bought one for a week. We were all good. And then I was, like, I forgot to get one for, like, a day, and I didn't get a ticket. And I, like, always got a ticket. So I was just, like, mm, let's just see how this goes. So I just, like, didn't buy a, a permit. And I think it also might be because I now have a street parking permit for my house, so I'm parking not in the right area, but at least I have that official permit, mm. you know. So they don't pay attention. So closely. they may not pay attention to like the exact code that I have. Long story short, I didn't get a ticket for like two weeks. And then like two days ago, I got a ticket for the first time in a while. And I was like, damn it, because the ticket's like $30 and a parking pass for a week is 25 So So you might as well just get the parking pass for a week. Or I just moved back into my house, and then it's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Soon, soon, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. But thank you, David, for letting me live with you. It's been very helpful and very nice. And I like watching The Greatest Baker Show with you. (laughs) This sounds like you don't. (laughs) (laughs) No, I do, I do. I like Good Morning Better. Is anybody watching HBO? No. Oh, that's Apple. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
the oh, the morning show. Oh, Steve Carell. Yeah, <laughs> and Jennifer Anson. <laughs> oh, she's the more important one. Oh, sorry. And Reese Witherspoon. Steve Carell's like number three on that list. I'm not watching it, so that's just Clearly. the one person I can think of. Clearly. <laughs> um, what are you watching? Um... Oh, good segue into what I'm watching on YouTube. I know. I planned that. <laughs> it wasn't accidental. We write, like, a little list of, like, things that have been on our brains this past week, and, like, sometimes they don't relate. Okay, <laughs> um, so I feel like every week or so, like, there's a different rabbit hole I find myself in on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And because you watch one thing, it recommends you, like, those things yeah. over and over and over. So I recently discovered Christine McConnell, which – you either know her who she is or you don't. <laughs> literally. Literally. Literally um, anybody. That's the answer for anything ever. <laughs> well, when I started watching her and I was reading the comments, I felt like I should know her because oh. she has a Netflix show. But I think the ish is that I think it's a U.S. Netflix oh, show. Oh, I was going to say, why don't we watch this? I think. I could be very wrong. And if I'm wrong, then I'm going home to watch it. But... <laughs> um, yeah, Canadian and U.S. Netflix have very different things on them. They do. So everyone was like, oh, like, so sorry to hear, like, her. she had a show on Netflix, and I think it got canceled. And everyone mm-hmm. was like, so sad that they didn't renew your show. Like, loved your show. It was my favorite thing. And I'm like, Also, oh. the, like, one series is, like, a big deal. Oh, Like, yeah. even just, like, one. Yeah. So. So, and I was, like, it felt, I felt very out of the loop reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like some comments to shade you into wanting to explore something. I know. Love it. Um, basically, who she is is, like, people like to describe her as Morticia Adams meets Martha Stewart. Okay. If that, That's a really good way of explaining it. It's really good. Like, who said that? Uh, the comments. Wow. We love those comments. I love the comments. Good for you. Does she want to collab with us? I, I want to collab with her, honestly. Like, how do I get in touch with her? Um, we can figure it out. We'll have our people call her people. <laughs> Anyone listening to this podcast, if you know Christine McConnell, tell her. Where is she? LA? Her. I actually don't know. That's a good question. I feel like no, because she has a house in a woodsy area. Okay, yeah, tell us more about her because all we know so far is she's has a YouTube channel and, and an she's show. and she's Marticia Adams meets Martha, Martha Stewart. Stewart, which is a fabulous combination. Yeah, so all I know of her is from her YouTube channel because like I said, I haven't seen the Netflix show, but um she lives in like this beautiful enchanted forest and her life is so like nineteen twenties, like gothic. <laughs> like she lives in a fairy tale house. Like, she, very fairy, yeah. Oh, like, very fairy tale. Literally a word you were using. I meant to say, like, story tale, story storybook. Book? Yeah, storybook. <laughs> very, like, yeah. Whimsical. Whimsical, Victorian era. Yeah. Um. Oh, what's that show? Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yeah. You know that house? Yeah. It's that vibe that she lives in. Yeah. But um, more cottage, you know? Honestly, I haven't seen smaller. anything. Except for, like, one thumbnail you should have. Yeah. Um, so basically she bought the house and like redid the entire house herself. DIY queen. DIY queen. Like, and she has a video, like a and a kind of about her house and she just like glazes over everything. Like she's gorgeous mm-hmm. and has like this perfect pinup hair and is wearing these like Victorian dresses. But she's sitting there being like, yeah, I refinished the floors all myself, did all this staining, all this carpentry and built all these built-ins. Like really badass things. Yeah. I love it. And one of the parts that's the coolest part of her house is that she wanted to have all this like ornate Victorian wallpaper in every room. Yeah. But she's like, I couldn't afford that. And we know wallpaper is so expensive. So expensive. And she has like all the walls and the ceilings, this pattern. Wow. And she was like, I didn't want to pay for it. So I just painted it. So she painted this little like floral design everywhere. Can she do like a stamp? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> but the fact that she did, I don't even know the hours it would take to do that. It's so cool. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Time is money. Yeah, I don't know. So fascinating. Need to learn more. (laughs) Yeah, must learn more. Check her out on YouTube. Yeah, she does like upholstery, um, sewing, woodworking, like everything you can think of. Say it to us one more time, her name again. Christine McConnell. Christine McConnell. Yeah, check her out. Um, Yeah, she's great. Okay. Next time I have more weird rabbit holes, I'll inform you. This can be a segment. Becky, Becky's weird rabbit hole today. Hi. <laughs> What's the <laughs> sound that a rabbit makes? They're quiet, aren't they? Becky's rabbit hole today. <laughs> that was it, like eating, you know. I get it. I get it. Or like I, I picture like thumper sounds. Like. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of segments, it's time for that segment. That is a quick break. Okay, and we're back. So I think part of the reason why we 
are ended up doing this topic today <laughs> is not only because we've been racking up weird questions and thoughts that we've had, but also because we just didn't know what to talk about. We were having a little sesh of like, what do we want to talk about on this podcast? And we were kind of just like, I don't know. I feel like we're so uninteresting. Yeah, but he's like, I'm not interesting. Sorry, I shouldn't speak over. I feel like I'm not interesting. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not interesting right now because all I can, I'm just stressing about house things. Yeah, and you feel like if you talk about the same thing all the time, then it becomes uninteresting, right? Oh, totally. Also, just like, I don't know. We were even talking today about our Spotify, like, rewinds. <laughs> oh, rap. Our wrapped up. A ra- yeah, Spotify wrap up or whatever they call it. Something like that. Wrapped? Yeah. Whatever it was, I was like, that's a good name because it's like rap, like, but then also like oh, rap as in like a present. And it's like that. rap, like wrapping up the year. It's like a very good name that I can't remember. <laughs> Something wrapped. Um, but yeah, I was like looking at my music and I was like, oh my God, I listened to like way less music this year. Um, the music that I did listen to is like, like there's not even that much variety there. Mm-hmm. Although it did say I was <laughs> genre fluid. Oh yeah, genre fluid. I laughed at that. It's, it's a clever word, Spotify. Yeah. Um, but just like you feel like it was not, it was like my top artist of the decade was Drake. I was like, I don't even listen to Drake. I was like, why is that? Why is that on here? Um, yeah, and just, like, I looked at the minutes, like, last year was, like, I listened to 73,000 minutes or something like that, and this past year was 15,000, I was like, what happened to me? <laughs> I'm so uninterested. You got busy. I know, it's literally busy, and we've talked about this probably on the podcast, but I've also talked about this and heard about this, that you should just, bleh, you should just not say the word busy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, like, so not cool when you... It's uninteresting. It's uninteresting when you meet up with your friends and they're like, how are you? And you're like, I'm busy. It's like, cool, bitch. Like, what am I supposed to do with that information? Pick one of the things you're busy with and tell us about it. I guess so. But, like, I feel like I'm uninteresting because I'm busy. Mm. You know? It's like, I don't get to read books. I used to read books. That's true. I, lo- I miss my routine so much. Mm-hmm. I crave a routine. Or I feel almost the opposite where, like, my life is very routine, and I love that. But it's like once you've heard about what I'm doing, you know what I'm doing. There's right. nothing new. But I feel like with a routine – this is my mind. I may be wrong. But with a routine, you do things that aren't in the routine, but it gives you time. Having In my mind, having a routine gives time, right, versus, like – I don't have a – so it's, like, now things are more complicated and, like, Mm -hmm. now I have these other, like, commitments. I mean, I guess – I can see that. I guess it's, like, yeah, just other things are taking up my routine. But, yeah. Maybe I made my routine too full and that's why I have no time. (laughs) Yeah. Scale back the routine. I know. I guess so. Yeah. Do you guys ever feel uninteresting? You can email us your thoughts. Podcast at thesorygirls.com. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I don't know if it's, like, because – we like i guess belittle what we're doing and think it's because we know it it's boring to or it would be boring to everyone else yeah or i don't know what are your thoughts yeah i think i'm an interesting person i just don't think i've had enough time to be doing things i want to be doing recently i think too i think we've talked about this in other podcasts where it's like hard to step outside of yourself too yeah we're like when I tell people about things going on in my life and then they get really excited about it and I'm like oh yeah you're right that is exciting because when you're living it it's it just becomes like so the normal that you don't like realize what's happening <laughs> yeah so maybe that's the, that part of the un- uninteresting thing too it's like I'm so in it that I don't think it's interesting anymore but then if you're able to step out of that and get an outside perspective it's like oh yeah those things could be really interesting yeah I am an interesting person I is. Yeah, and I think also our interesting things are just, like, running a company right now. It's true. I'm, like, yeah, stressing about finding a new office and house things, which isn't a company, but whatever. It's my personal <laughs> company thing, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. So we can jump in then because these, oh, we feel like, are more interesting things to talk about. Yeah. So we have this list of, like, weird things that we want to know more about. And they don't relate at all, but that's what's fun about it. I think we started writing them down because, yeah, they were interesting thoughts. And the the idea was to write them down in hopes that they would fit into 
other podcast mm-hmm. topics and i just don't think they did like sometimes an interesting singular thought can turn into a podcast topic uh but with these ones it was like cool you want to talk for like an hour about um sign language maybe maybe to find out so yes the first one is sign language and I'll, i can tell you how this like thought came to be <laughs> rounding back to vidcon 2019 we were at vidcon and they were putting on like a show one of the nights and we went and we were sitting in the crowd and we <laughs> happened to be sitting like at the side of the area where there was a sign language translator yeah um, kind of in a booth in front of us and they were basically it was a musical performance and they were signing the lyrics to the song um, but the song they were signing to was half in English and half in Spanish. Yeah. So I, like me, I was just entertained by the person signing and not really the artist, sorry, whoever was performing, I don't remember. Um, because it's cool. I don't I don't know how to speak or read sign language. Yeah. So I was so entertained by this. And I think it was like a, uh, I think it was a woman who was doing it. And she was doing all the English parts. And There was a woman, yeah. And a man. Yeah. So she was doing the beginning of the song and then she stepped away and I was like, what's happening? Yeah. And then a man comes up and continues signing, and he's signing now the Spanish lyrics of the song. And I don't know what it was. It was like when your computer glitches out and, like, the rainbow wheel goes, That my brain just did that. And I was like, what just happened? What does this mean? What it, What is sign language? And I realized that b- even though they're both translating into the same language, you have to know – the origin language you're translating from to convert it i guess the question is are they translating whew, yeah there's literally translating verbal to let's call it visual verbal to visual and then i guess there's translating like the actual language like french to english yes spanish to english so when they were signing do you think they were signing from like you said spanish to like ASL. ASL, which I'm assuming is English. It's its own language. That's the thing. But is it English? No. I don't think so. What? Right? <laughs> I think. I don't know. This could be so just like a, a dumb moment for anyone listening, but like I don't think so. I think it's, it's I think it would be its own language. It's like English, French. Well, sign. it's American sign language. I know. And then there's UK like No, there's not. Is there? Uh, yeah, I was watching something recently and it was like I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's like, yeah, there's like, that's why it's called American Sign Language, because there's non-American Sign Language. Insert the rainbow wheel over my face right now. That is such a concept. I know. I see, I was, the best way I was picturing it in my head was that it's like, it's like a language unto its own, and then it'd be like someone trying to translate someone speaking Spanish at me and I'm trying to translate that to English to someone and then someone coming up to me and speaking Japanese and I have to translate that to English too. I have to know both languages to convert it to English. Yeah. I pictured it that way, but if it's not even, then that's... I mean, I think for sure now we know that sign language translators have to be... I mean, they have to know the language that they're translating. So that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So like you can't just like walk in and they're like, well, today... Like, they had to plan that in advance that, like, oh, we're going to have a Spanish, like, like singer mm-hmm. here. It's Someone like, oh. has to know. Otherwise, imagine, like, you're just hired to sign this concert, and then all of a sudden they start singing, like, French, and you're like, oh. I don't know how to I do- can't do my job anymore because I don't know French. Right? Yeah, that is crazy. It's something that we don't think about. It might seem so obvious to so many people, but I'm sure somebody out there is also like, What? And I also really hope this doesn't come across as, like, insensitive in yeah. any way that I didn't know this. But, I mean, I think it's useful that you have these thoughts. You can take the opportunity to learn more about it, right? Mm-hmm. I just – I don't know. I, I didn't know it. Yeah, I just need to – somebody explain to me how, I guess, actually American Sign Language works. Because obviously when they teach you, the same way when you kind of learn a language – you're getting taught, like, if somebody's trying to teach me, like, cat in French, you're mm-hmm. like, le chat, mm-hmm. la chat, I don't know, but yeah, chat, um, but I'm learning, like, what that word is in English, they're like, hey, this is cat in English, Yeah. so when, if you're being taught sign language, which, I mean, we know some things, like, I love you or something, but mm-hmm. you're told what that means in English. So do you think, if there's French sign language... The sign for sha is the same thing. 
like, can someone who is American and knows English but speaks sign language speak to another person that uses sign language from across the world? No. I think that's why it's called American Sign Language because it's like its own language. Yeah. Oh, damn. Well, then this led us to another um, thought about how sign language, the language is kept up with and how certain oh. words are added to sign language and who gets to be controlling that you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. You know every year there's words added to the english oxford english dictionary or whatever right what are some recent words added to that one? Oh, i don't know it's a good question but we did find information on who or how the okay. si- american sign language is is kept up with so there's a guy one of probably many people who do this but mm-hmm. his name is bill vickers and he owns an organization called life print which educates through technology-based asl programs so he has a dictionary where he goes through steps to add new words oh, to the smart. ASL yeah. dictionary. You don't want to be outdated. Yeah. So I guess he's one of the people that are helping to add to this dictionary. Um, but so for certain slang words that aren't or haven't been added to this ASL dictionary yet, um, what we've gathered is that they just sign the spelling of the word. Oh, really? So, well, so, that's easy for LOL. So we were thinking about, like, newer slang that we use. Like, for example, the word yeet. We. <laughs> Becky. Yeet. Um, yeah. For those, of, for those that don't know, can we explain yeet? Because sometimes I see comments and people are like, what's a DM? Oh. Yeet is like, it's like, um, what's the, oh, there's got to be a word for when something sounds like what it is. It's like um oh an alliterate like, like bam or punch yeah i think it's like it's supposed to be the sound of the word of, of something something being thrown yeah <laughs> like, it's like thrown away almost specifically like, it's like to chuck it with force <laughs> i believe <laughs> wow i love that definition <laughs> like, to chuck with force to <laughs> yeet. <laughs> exactly yeet. but like you say it you can say it either like like as the sound of you doing it like yeet yeah. Or it can be in a sentence like, I'm going to yeet this across the room. <laughs> okay. I love that. I also, I hate that I'm the representative on slang here because I, I don't feel like I'm the most up to date. So if that's an incorrect um, definition of to yeet or yeeting. In the office, somebody like said, Daniela. So why do I have to say somebody? It was Daniela. She was like, somebody just messaged me and said, what no, no cap no cap and she's like what does it mean yeah we were like i don't know and now we have a, a like a you know the little letter boards and it's like slang of the day <laughs> no cap yeah which which means no you, lie no lie yeah because apparently cap or capping is slang for lying you gotta know other slang to know other slang oh my god i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> so yeah maybe something like eat or no cap might not have um, a sign for it, but then you would just spell it like Y E T. I'd still be like, the fuck, <laughs> man. But there are for like slangs that have been around for a little while. There are signs for them now. So things like selfie, duck face, photo bomb, duck face, duck face. I, I mean, know. that's always been around. It's called a duck. Do you want to know what the face. sign for selfie is? Do you know it? Is it this? It is. I knew it. You got to do the duck face with it. What's the sign for duck face? <laughs> <laughs> Off camera, Daniela. Face. Oh, sorry. We just totally like ignored our our podcast listeners. The we, sign for selfie is literally like holding a phone out in front of your face, but without the phone. Selfie. Yeah. We also have um, video versions of these podcasts on our vlog channel at The Sorry Life. If you'd yeah. like to watch along, see us do the selfie sign (laughs) i did it um (laughs) sorry i just thought of like a whole podcast of sign language oh my god that would not be helpful (laughs) it'd be a visual podcast so if you know anything about this topic because the best way to learn is from firsthand experience with people that actually live it and know it Mm -hmm. um email us because i would love to learn more also interesting podcast at the sorry girls.com okay So the next random thought we had, (laughs) actually, maybe you can explain where this thought came from because I feel like it was a you thought. Really? No, it was definitely a Becky thought. I don't think so. I was making a wreath. Uh Uh-huh. And then I remember you saying. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was me. Where did wreaths come from? Yeah. 
I like to challenge just like everything because I'm like, why is this a tradition? Especially traditions. I'm just like, where did this come from? Why do we hang like natural materials shaped into a circle on our front doors? Specifically at holiday time, which I now feel like has translated to like fall and all seasons. April. Have springs now. Or, <laughs> springs. I was thinking spring. Wreaths. All seasons have wreaths now. Yeah. So like. literally switch out for your summer wreath. It's like, <laughs> what do you put on that? Sand? So so basically when we were doing our research, there there's kind of like <laughs> our, our research. Research. Oh, our, uh, our wreath search. Um, there's kind of like a couple of different um, places where the wreath is said to be originated from. Originated. Why did I say that? It's so weird. <laughs> originated from um and one of them centers around like christianity and the uh, wreath being a part of advent so what's advent like the advent calendar it's part of christmas season oh i know what an advent calendar is but i did not know that was religious some parts of like the holidays are not religious and some parts are and i get very (laughs) confused to somebody who's not religious that like what's from what well like the wreath right so some people say it's religious and other people date it back to another era which maybe you can tell us about Mm, okay I will tell you about that. Um, that would be back to the Greece and Roman era, where members of the Greco-Roman society would hang ring-shaped wreaths using fresh tree leaves, twigs, and small fruits and flowers. Um, so wreath translated literally means a thing bound around from the Greek word dia- diadema. It's kind of like your last na- your new last name. It's totally not related, though. <laughs> Tia um, Oh, yeah, because, like, in Greece, they were worn as, like, headdresses. Yeah, when you think of, like, Caesar or, like, an, a toga party costume. <laughs> <laughs> Probably super offensive. Yeah. Um, can they still do those anymore? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but you guys can picture it, right? Like yeah, Like a yeah. wreath basically worn on your head. Yeah, like a flower. Sorry. Also <gasps> Oh my god, the origin of flower crowns. Is a wreath. Flower and cr- like you know how birds and like dinosaurs are related? Wreaths yes. and flower crowns are related. Oh yes, absolutely got to be. Wow. Um laurel wreaths were used to crown victors at the ancient Greco-Roman Olympic Games. We now use them to signify a- winning awards, the official laurel awards, so you may see them on movie posters. That just like took a turn. So, like, so the first, how does that relate to your well, door? they were making wreaths of, like, natural things. Okay. And then sometimes those were used as headdresses. Yeah. And then really fancy versions of those that maybe were gold mm-hmm. were given to winners, which then we, like, translated to this, like, you know, the leaf pattern that's around, like, best Oscar movie this year. Wait, can I tell you a funny story that's so related to today? Yes. It's because I'm going to um, my th- – that's why I'm going to Texas for my dad's holiday party. Mm-hmm. And, like, last minute they're like, yo, it's, like, a, a award theme or, like, Oscar – Academy Award. That's what it is. <laughs> it's like, why does it have two names? I don't understand. But it's Academy Award themed. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's a holiday party. I'm just going to dress like it's holiday themed. But as I was running out the door, I was like, ooh, I need some earrings. And I grabbed um, these earrings that Best Dress sent us, Ashley – um and they are like little laurels they're little laurels there's one that's like a wreath it's like a full little mini gold wreath and then there's one that's just like half and it has a little pearl and those are the ones i grabbed um and in my head i was like oh my god this is my nod to being academy award themed at this party because my earrings will be the little laurels and then the rest of me is just holiday that's that's genius that's it thank you i did that (laughs) The Greeks did that. <laughs> that is true. The Greeks did that. Okay, interesting. I feel like we still need to make the gap, like the jump from from the Grecian era to like holiday Christmas. But I'm glad we have some answers there. There was more answers. I just don't know them all. Like it was a lot to read. It's so hard. Like history doesn't have an easy answer. Yeah. That's why people get paid. That's why people pay a lot of money to study it. Whether they get paid a lot after that, I don't know. <laughs> yes. It was something along the lines of um, Christmas season 
and hanging a wreath on a door to signify time passing because they last a long time wreaths i guess natural wreaths in the winter season oh, they don't wow. die that quickly and then they're like what date is it i don't know your wreath looks like it's kind of half dead something like that and then they would hang it on a door and i think i believe there was a candle that got placed in it and it was swatched swatched out <laughs> beauty guru switched out <laughs> every day to count down until christmas i believe oh something like that wow are people gonna be mad at me because i don't know you know what if you guys are mad because we don't know these things then we'll just quit because this is our random uninteresting episode i was saying that like off camera to daniela but we should leave it in because like this is the real struggle we have yeah it's like are we educated enough on any of these topics does it matter because we're just trying to learn we're just starting a conversation Okay, shoot, I don't have a good segue for this one. Well, we can just move on to the next random thought we had. Yeah, that's why we're doing this, guys. Random (laughs) thoughts, they don't relate at all, which is why this is a random thought episode. (laughs) Okay, so this one was definitely a Becky, a (laughs) Beckyism. In all of our painting, she's just like, yo, who to F made up these paint names and not paint names specifically but right now we're just talking about the actual categories of paint names of paint finishes oh that's right okay can i just tell you why it doesn't make any sense (laughs) so when you choose your finish of paint yeah yeah. you get matte paint which makes sense because it's matte but it's also called flat okay flat matte both of those things describe it without being weird yeah you can have glossy which also describes it it's a shiny paint yeah we get it but then semi-gloss semi semi gloss it makes sense also it makes sense then then you come to little little eggshell (laughs) which is the most popular one and what eggshell eggshell like why if we're if we're gonna compare the finish of paints to like food items why not do it for everything and also is it even an eggshell i don't know like i guess eggs are kind of that texture but also kind of flat it depends i guess are they free range i don't know like let's say we're what would be a glossy paint then in the food world Ooh, 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 gelatin ew but yes (laughs) like i'm thinking of a fruit tart shiny oh yeah yeah like that glaze yeah fruit tarts glaze then what would be matte like ooh, ooh, like like bread bread pasta carbs carbs hi would you like your would you like your hold on i'm picking out paint colors right now would you like your simply white in um bread or gelatin or perhaps you prefer eggshell you're like eggshell every time see that makes sense though no you know what we need to figure out not what all the other colors what other the other finishes would be in food form but what eggshell would be not in food form well eggshell is um natural standard what about just standard that is the standard and then from there you go flatter or from there you go glossier what is the there is a word and i like it it's used to describe um like shellac finishes that is like somewhere in the middle what's that word girl i don't know satin 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 that's it don't you think eggshell is kind of like the satin? I feel like satin's a little bit shinier, but... Semi-satin. Done. Semi-satin. Done and dusted. <laughs> okay, so then I feel like we have other issues with paints. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we were just wondering, like, because sometimes the names of paint colors are so ridiculous. Yeah. And I want to know, who gets paid the monies to sit there and come up with the name? And I think this is a long-running joke of, like... I feel like lots of comedians have made this joke of like, hi, yeah, like I want to get paid to do that. But I honestly feel like it might be a hard job because you have to make sure that if you're working for a paint company, that your paint color isn't the same name as any other paint color that it in your company or any other company. And it has to evoke the right feeling. Because, like, you might look at that color and be like, mm, that's definitely baby puke. But, like, you can't call it baby puke. How do you put a positive spin on baby puke? That's a good question. Can you do that? Because that's, I think, a very high-paying job. Pre-loved dinner. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, post-infant. Enjoyment. It's an exterior pain only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's totally available in exterior. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a little bit of research to find answers to these questions, and we found out that at Bear paint team 
um, they consider the emotion that a color might evoke. <laughs> Imagine like taking home the paint swatch and then like sleeping with it and be like, "How do I feel? What do I feel about this paint swatch?" Just be- like looking at it like longingly. Yeah. Do you feel adventurous when you look at it? Do you feel comforted when you look at it? Oh. After they figure out the right emotion, then there's kind of like four categories they look to to like figure out where the name should come from. This is amazing. Can we do a tour? Exactly. Not of the facility where they make the paint. No, no. No. Of the office. Of which they decide. Where they sit there. Yeah, this is going to happen. Okay. (laughs) So apparently the four categories they divide into are visual, geographical, emotional, and experiential. Okay. So that makes sense. Like geographical sometimes. Like a lot of them are named after nature-based things. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Um, Like we have one that makes me laugh every time. It's a blue color and I think it's called like sunken pool. Oh, yeah. Not in-ground pool. Sunken pool. Not above-ground pool. No. Sunken. Sunken pool. But I feel like they nailed it. because. Okay, so what did they do? Was it visual, geographical, emotional, or experiential? Definitely not emotional. But it could be. Because when I look at that color, it's very refreshing blue. I look at it and I'm like... I feel like I'm in a pool on a hot summer day, you know? That's my emotions. Damn. That's cool, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, maybe it's all of those things. I don't know. Interesting. It also says here that um, when, you Benjam- yeah. <laughs> when a Benjamin Moore color isn't specific to a paint line or collection, the color team opens up naming to all company employees and then filters the results. Imagine getting that email once a month. They're like, well, we got a new color in the name. You're like, I can't crack my knuckles. But that's like, you know, the, oh, I'm ready. Like, bring it on. Like, I imagine them all training in the office, like, around the water color- cooler. They're like, da 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 is playing. And they're all, like, getting ready to submit their best name offers. Yeah. They're like, what do you, what do you got? What do you got? What are you going to name it? I wonder if they, like, win something. Oh, they better. Like, a lifetime supply of that color. Oh, but God. But turns out it was the baby puke color. It was the exterior... <laughs> infant <laughs> dinner Ew. and then also benjamin moore they have a vetting process to eliminate duplicative names um from their existing library of over three thousand five hundred colors that's crazy that's a lot but also like at the same time it doesn't seem like a lot but it is a lot because i just was picking whites recently um and it's a lot that's a whole another thing is like how do you name a white more than 10 times when it's just a white yeah a lot of them like i was even trying to like triple check today and i was like trying to place my paint order and i'm like white dove or there was like another one that's dove i think oh my goodness what'd you go with do you know i think i'm doing white dove and simply white it's so hard honestly that i was trying to i was debating between snowfall white and simply white and i also wondered you said this earlier too because it says they have to choose from 3,500 of their own colors, but yeah, do they have to choose, like, search every other paint colors? I names? mean, they should because you don't want your red, like, autumn leaves to look like another company's red ob- autumn leaves. It's true. That's just bad branding. It's confusing if I walk into Home Depot that stocks, like, four different paint brands. And I'm like, I want White Dove, and they're like, yeah, but who's White Dove? Also, do any paint brands have millennial pink? Oh, they better. Oh, my God. That missed opportunity huge missed opportunity are you <laughs> kidding me um okay sorry oh wait okay hold on i have an answer for you maybe not um but there's a design expert um who notes that the names sometimes take several months to finalize i mean that seems makes sense um and the benjamin Moore representative says that um we also ensure that these names are legally compl- compliant and also bring a positive association to the customer. Millennial pink might offend some people. That's probably why they didn't do it. Mm, but also the amount of people that would scoop that up. Like imagine if you're looking at a paint swatch and you're like, I don't know. This one says like like flamingo foot. And this one's called like lipstick be poppin'. But this one's called millennial pink. <laughs> like I'm about to pick up the millennial pink. It's funny because actually um, or an earlier quote that we have is that um, they said that sometimes when it comes down to it, the name preference is what customers go with when deciding if they're cho- stuck between two colors. Wow. That actually is crazy. I wouldn't actually, I don't know. Maybe I would pick it subconsciously. Subconsciously, I think. 
because like imagine if i was looking at two whites and i was like mm, i don't know which one i like and then one was like something yellow tint it's like i'm not picking the yellow tint one because that's what i'm afraid of is my house having like too much of a green tint or something mm -hmm. yeah that's right? true i was looking at paint swatches because i'm maybe painting a wall in my um bedroom yeah and the what the two that i liked i there was something like one was like dusty road and the other one was like chai latte yeah and how fun <laughs> like i haven't decided anything yet but like my room is painted chai latte yeah it's pretty cool it's fun let me know um if you want some benjamin more paint because they're sponsoring my house will paint do. and i will get you a, a, a gallon I will do. oh that means i gotta do my paint research all over again I sorry looking at bear. no it's okay i'll do it for free paint yeah right i'll get you a um <clears throat> okay we have a little paint game i actually don't know how this paint game works but on my little sheet i have four colors here i can tell you how it works oh tell me becky <laughs> so um ali our assistant pulled up four paint names um four paint swatches and we don't know the names of these okay and we have to give our best judgment on what we think these colors are named okay one is see if we're close or not one is like a dusty rose one is like a pretty classic green one is a sky blue and one is a pretty basic brown okay um obviously those probably aren't the names and those weren't my guesses either because we need to get way more creative than that mm -hmm. so do you want to start with the um the dusty pink yeah. do you know the answers daniela okay i was like i need to know <laughs> hmm okay well it's not a bright pink at all no it's kind of like Dusty feels right. I know. But that's too simple. It's too obvious. It's probably something like... Ooh. Go. Uh, no, I was going to say ballet, but I think ballet would be lighter pink than Yeah, that. it'd be more of a baby pink. What about like... What about like... I feel like it's something weird, like dusty wildflower rose. Yeah. Wildflower and rose seem redundant, but yeah. Well, you have to compete with 3,500 other color names. Oh, my God. And literally the only <laughs> thing we can think of is Dusty Rose. Like, let's think of anything other than Dusty Rose. What about, like, gums? Oh. Okay, Danielle has an answer. Can I give you a hint? Yeah, yeah give, give us a hint. I want you to, like, personify the color. Personify the color? Oh. So does that mean it has more of, like, a... Emotion? Or, like, it's, like, grandma or, like, baby... Okay, let's give grandma an emotion. <gasps> what about, like, daughter's rose? Final answer. Do you want to know the answer? Dusty daughter rose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what is the answer? Lady Genevieve. Lady Genevieve, as if as you would, if you would ever, ever guess that. Well, I, I was on the right track with daughter. Thank you for the personify. Oh, you know, sorry. We need to have a part two of this game because we need to play the reversal version where you tell us the name of the paint and we have to tell you what color we think Because Lady Genevieve, I would have picked the light yellow. Cause yeah. Like lady know. sounds like, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, so this green. It's a pretty foresty green. It's literally just like a green. It's like the color of these pillows. Kind of. A what little, about? A little lighter. How many words is it? There are always two words. Like literally. That's interesting. Good it to know. Interesting. Good to know if, when sunken I'm applying. Sunken pool. Sunken pool. <laughs> Simply white. White dove. Um, okay. This is a green. Does it have the word green in it? No. Of course not. Fuck. It probably isn't even something that sounds like it would be green. Yeah. If it's anything like Lady Genevieve. Because <laughs> Allie's trying to trip us up over here. So this one is more of like a experience based. So this green apparently is named after something experience based. Okay. So like. What about, um, what about, like, um, what's it called when you go zip lining? Zip lining. Zip line forest. Experience. Hike. Hi I forest hike. I was thinking hike. hike, yeah. I was thinking hike, too. Okay, we're going with forest hike. It is less traveled. Less traveled. I kind of love that, though. I feel like we're on the right road, because that's from the quote, <laughs> take the road less traveled. Honestly, we aren't on the right road. And hiking in the woods, maybe, is, is the path less traveled. <laughs> Okay, this is, like, the most classic, like, light sky blue I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, it's, like, a powder blue, maybe? Is that a, a Yeah. Word? Yeah. You know what this looks like? I feel like a lot of old kitchens wear this color, or, like, old kitchen appliances. Okay, let's go to something kitchen-y, then. Like, Obviously, that's the only obvious choice. 
vintage toaster. Mm. <laughs> Not right. Not right. Vintage blue. Do they ever have the words in it? Like, you know what I mean? I feel like they don't call them, like, blue. No. Like, sunken pool is not blue. That's true. Okay. So, we're not going to put the word pink in there or blue. <laughs> Let's have vintage, though. Vintage. Okay. Vintage. Um, what's something blue that can be vintage? Vintage water? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Let's do it. Is it vintage water for 100, Alex? Vintage aquamarine. No, it's not teal enough. Okay. Go. What is it? Promise keeping. Is that related to wedding? Like something blue? You know. Wow. Deep. Okay, our final, no offense, but nasty brown color. This is close to baby puke exterior paint. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it's just brown with a little bit of green in it. Like a taupe, but a not a nice taupe. Is this baby puke? No. Does it have taupe in the word? I, it's like it's very much a like a brown name. <laughs> a br- <laughs> she says laughing. It's a very much a brown name. What does that mean? Does it have the word brown in it? <laughs> no, it never does. I swear to God. If I ever come across another paint color that has like a color in the title, I will be like, wow, this is apparently one in a million. Shut okay, up. what's a very brown thing? She's giggling too, which makes me think it's like inappropriate, but it's paint. It can't like be. poop? <laughs> yeah um <laughs> what's a brown thing like dirt chocolate chocolate dirty chocolate no <laughs> dusty chocolate dusty dirty chocolate <laughs> um <laughs> what else is brown coffee coffee Could be coffee dusty coffee grounded grounded coffee oh yeah that's good grounded coffee it's yeah it's archaeological sites <laughs> archaeological site are you, are kidding, you me? kidding me are you kidding yo me? i need to know that was obviously an intern answer someone had just watched indiana jones before submitting this answer. archaeological site wow That's wow crazy. i wonder if they ever open up a dictionary and just start flipping and it's like close your eyes whatever word you land on you make it work that's how i want to live my life tbh <laughs> just make it work you know how people like do that thing where they spin the globe and then point, put your finger and yeah. that's like exactly yeah that for but paint. that for paint or that for like living my life like what do i want to do today flip 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 land on like oh god i can't think of an interesting word are you talking about paint still no oh <laughs> we're still talking about paint i'm just talking about like imagine if you just flipped open a dictionary and then like was like that's what i'm doing today i have to do something related to like a and W vegan nuggets. That's what you're doing today. Oh yeah, that's that is a segue. That was a really bad segue, but that is what we did today. We um, we tried. <laughs> Why is this on the list? <laughs> we need to bulk out the podcast. We're like, <laughs> hold on, let's come back to talking about <laughs> the nuggets. Yeah, we actually are very lucky, <laughs> um, that we get to try a beta nugget from A and W, which A and W is. A- canadian like the only thing people americans know is the root beer yeah because a and w is a popular like burger and root beer joint in canada fast food food. and i think in the states all they have is a and w root beer but in canada we have a and w root beer and a whole like mcdonald's type chain um but anyways they have they were like one of the first people to come out with a beyond burger Mm -hmm. and then it was popular so like every other fast food chain now is coming out with plant-based which is like good but i'm also like i kind of respect AW for like being the first yeah um and they have ch- chicken in quotation marks nuggets now and we tried them today at the office make sure you guys watch that vlog it's coming out probably in a couple of days if this podcast is going up on monday um can confirm they were delicious yeah they were pretty good yeah, they, they were seasoned pretty nicely. A and W hit us up for a sponsor. Because oh my! We love your God. meat substitute products. I mean, Loki, they don't need to hit us up because we just keep giving them free promo. That's true. Lasai. Um, but yeah, that was good. What else did we have to talk about? I Loki have to get going soon because I got a flight to catch. <laughs> um, I think that kind of rounds up our thoughts or weird thoughts that maybe now we learned a little bit more about. Maybe you learned a little bit more about things that. You probably didn't know you needed to learn more about, but now you do. Wow. Make that the title. 
Things that you didn't know you need to learn more about that you probably need to learn more about so now you know no more about. Things you maybe even didn't want to know more about, but <laughs> it's too late, baby. You're Oops. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, make sure, if, as always, if you guys have something to comment, question, concern on, you can send letters to the editor at podcast at the sorry girls dot com um yeah there's a good chance we'll feature you so feel free to load our inbox yeah tell us your thoughts about these topics if you know any more info on them or if you had any weird thoughts of your own that you found a cool answer mm. to tell us that's what i want to know i want to know what were your weird thoughts all right thank you guys so much for listening to i love how you're casually putting on <laughs> chapstick at the end of this you're like oh we're out i'm adding my chaps loading on the chapstick um Thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and following a little about a lot. And we'll uh, talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Bye-bye now. Bye.